Good evening. I'd like to call the Village Board meeting of October 4th, 2010 to order. And may we have the roll call, please? Mayor Ron is absent tonight. Mayor Pro Tem Clemenau. Present. The clerk's here. Trustee Emery. Here. Trustee Fleming. Here. Trustee Forsley. Here. Trustee Scott. Here. Trustee Seneca. Here. Manager Searle. Here. Attorney Zemanek. Here. Police Chief Mulhern. Here. Fire Chief Trout. Here. Economic Development Director and Assistant Manager Kimball. Here. Public Works Director May. Here. Budget Analyst Parker. Here. Supervisor of Engineering Noriega. Here. Water Department Supervisor Ramsey. Here. Streets Department Supervisor Barrett. Here. Hey, may we call rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is the minutes of the uh, Committee of the Whole on September 16th and the board meeting on September 20th. May I have a motion? Motion to approve Seneca. Second, Second. Emory. Okay, any corrections? <laughs> Hearing none, may we have a roll call please? Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Clevenau. Yes. Trustee Emory. Yes. Thank you. For mayor's report, um, I have nothing from the mayor, but um, I would just like to remind our viewers and the board that uh, tomorrow night is the open house at the uh, fire station uh, headquarters on the south side. It's from 6.30 to 8.30, so hopefully a lot of us can be present for it. And also Friday, uh, starting uh, 7 o'clock from Hinsdale, we'll start and kick off the silent parade that'll go down Chicago Ave and then end up at the uh, church in uh, Lyle. So I hope everybody can uh, attend that, at least be out on, show their support for the fire department. And uh, I will remind every the board and anybody who's interested that on October 12th at 7 p.m. is uh, Public Works uh, Committee meeting. Uh, and that's all I have to report. Okay, clerk. Um, I just want to tell everyone that if they didn't, and a lot of people I know didn't make the Westmont Harvest Fest, but it was really nice in that Westmont Yard is a wonderful facility. Just beautiful. So people should really go look at that. And that's all I have to for tonight. Thanks. Attorney? Nothing tonight. Right. Thanks. Nothing. Okay. Manager? Uh, yes, a couple of things. I wanted to mention that we're going to have a special admin and finance committee meeting on Monday, October 11th. Uh, that's going to be uh, at 730 here at the Village Hall. Um, the other thing I had was I want to introduce our Public Works Director, Steve May. Uh, he's going to make a presentation tonight regarding the Public Works Department. This is uh, the second in a series of uh, uh, presentations we're having on our various departments. Um, the first one was the Fire Department. Uh, the next one on October 18th will be the Economic Development Department. And then on November 1st, we have the Police Department and then uh, Admin administration and clerks on uh, November 15th. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Steve Mayer, Public Works Director. Thank you. I'm happy to be here tonight to give this presentation. Uh, tonight I'm going to give you a, a general uh, overview of the uh, overall function of the, the Public Works Department. In the Public Works Department, we actually consist of uh, five divisions and some of them are public divisions. In, in general, it's very common uh, what people think of as public works is what we know as the street division. Uh, there's also the water and uh, engineering, and then there's other internal divisions too where there's just services within the department itself or to the uh, village operations. Uh, each division has its own supervisor that uh, administers the functions in those uh, areas, and uh, these supervisors are also working supervisors, so they're also one of the uh, workers they all you know, get dirty, you know, every day. The, in the street division, I'm going to go through these in order, is, is one of the, the bigger division. And there are 15 people in this division, one supervisor, uh, an administrative assistant, and the rest are combinations of, of maintenance workers. There's one certified uh, arborist, 
the village forester on staff and depending on the year we have a different combination of seasonal staff that we can utilize in the summer it's uh, contingent on the budget and an availability of um, personnel as well but we do have a lot of guys that you know re a lot of returning employees in the summer you know, as well the street division itself is responsible for uh, maintaining well all, all of public works our function is to maintain everything that's village owned all the whether it's the, the infrastructure, the streets, the sidewalks, the sewers, or uh, the, you know, the buildings and equipment. In the street division, they, they, they take care of the, the village infrastructure. There's uh, many miles of streets and alleys and sidewalks and storm sewers. Uh, whereas they do most of this work uh, themselves under our own forces, there are certain things like on here is the street lighting. There are uh, maintenance contractors that we might utilize for certain contractual services or, or traffic signals as well. Uh, these statistics on here are the are the, the the infrastructure that we're responsible for. That's not all that exists in the town. There are other agencies that have jurisdiction, including the Illinois Department of Transportation, the uh, DuPage Department of Transportation, and uh, when it comes to uh, you know we do the storm sewers, the sanitary district. There is two separate sanitary districts that maintain a separate sanitary sewer system in town as well. Street lighting, those 831 lights are the ones that we maintain. Uh, there's more than 1,000 lights that are in town. Some are maintained by Commonwealth Edison, like on the wood poles and um, like that. Uh, we're responsible for five traffic signals. There's more of that in town, but pretty much anything along Ogden Avenue, 55th Street, 63rd, 65th, 67th, those are all on county highway or, or state routes, so we don't maintain those. We tried to do an estimate today of how many traffic signs we have and did a sample of the town. We don't have a, you know, a perfect inventory. It's something I wish we had, but so far we're, we estimate that we've got an excess of 4,500 signs that we maintain throughout the town. Uh, along with that are the pavement markings. Uh, the public parking lots, primarily in the downtown, includes commuter parking lots. And we have an urban forest that we estimate to be in excess of 12,000 trees that would be on public properties in the parkways and on uh, you know, village-owned properties. Other services besides the uh, the maintenance, uh, other services done in the street division are the you know some of the ones that are obvious to many people the, the snow removal and um, uh, the street sweeping. We do brush pickup. We have a very aggressive brush pickup program, particularly compared to uh, you know any of our neighboring communities. I mean we've reduced ours and it's still a very aggressive one. Uh, we have a sidewalk replacement program. I, I refer to them as the maintenance. So this would be the sidewalk replacement, either hazardous sidewalk or, or part of the sidewalk replacement, you know, the residential program we have where we, these are the sidewalks that exist in town as opposed to the new programs and uh, loan a truck as well. Next division is the water division. They are a, a public water utility. They're uh, a little bit self-contained but still part of the, the public works department uh, these similarly set up with uh, one supervisor and uh, maintenance workers but the water division you know being a utility it, it's actually you know last year they celebrated their 100 year anniversary so their first you know permit to operate as a, as a public water utility was in 1909 it's actually older than the community and for that first for 83 years or through 1992, uh, water was supplied through a combination of different wells that were drilled throughout the town. Uh, over the course of time, 13 wells were drilled. They weren't all in operation all at the same time. But in 1992, uh, the village uh, was, became a member of the DuPage Water Commission, and we now receive water from the DuPage Water Commission, who gets it from the city of Chicago and Lake Michigan. So we get water delivered, pre-treated to the limits of our town now. And we still have to uh, tend to it the same way, but uh, the, the distribution's the same. On average, um, we have about two and a half million gallons of water a day that is uh, you know, sold to our customers and distributed. The, the system itself maintains uh, four different storage vessels, two towers and two tanks. And over the course of the year, we distribute about 900 million gallons of water. Besides the, the infrastructure that's in there, we also have to maintain uh, the water treatment plant, the testing, and the, and the distribution pumping facility that uh, you know, provides both pressure and, and allows us to re recycle the water that's in there. Within the water division, there's three uh, separate functions. The 
the three areas that have responsibility in there are the production where they actually receive and they're responsible for the water quality and pressure, the distribution which is pretty much everything outside all of the water main maintenance, and then what we call customer service internally, but it, it is the everybody who interacts with the water meters uh, in each individual customer's home or business and uh, water billing that goes with that. Uh, in production, I, I mentioned the, you know, the, the water quality and balancing. We have a responsibility of um, you know, maintaining that water quality. We have to do very little water treatment, but there is some that's done. But there are anywhere from 30 to 40 tests that are done every single day um, on the water supply. And in addition to that, there are other tests that are, there are different combinations of tests. Some have to be done monthly, some have to be done quarterly, uh, in some cases annually. And I think there's even one that has to be done like every three years or something. Uh, some of these tests are done with a professional laboratory. It's required that we send them out to a certified lab and those results are go straight to the Illinois EPA. But uh, all in all, when you add it all together, we're responsible for administering over 14,000 water quality tests uh, on the public water system. Distribution has a big infrastructure to take care of. There's uh, maintained 90 miles of water main. The uh, fire hydrant and system valves on here are just an example of the things that have to be paid attention to. Uh, that's kind of misleading too because every fire hydrant has its own valve uh, you know, as part of its appurtenance as well. So it, it's actually over 2,500 valves. But this is a, a lot to, to keep track of. And over the past 20 years, I repaired over uh, 1,000 water main breaks. And at that time, we also started an aggressive water main replacement program and started getting uh, you know, the older parts of town and, and switching that out. The, I, I threw that up there because you know, the, the, over 20 years and 1,000 water main breaks, it was, it was a pretty consistent average of about 50 water main breaks a year through 1992. And then there was a spike. It actually got higher than that for a short while because of the difference in uh, water temperatures and the way the, the, the pressure was uh, distributed throughout the town. But with the aggressive um, replacement, that number has gone way down. Uh, you have to go back. you know to 1999 before you've, you've, you've had a, a number like 50 water main breaks per year. And just for example, this year we've only had 16, or I guess 17, we had one today. And uh, you know, 24 the year before and 11 the year before that. So I, I wanted to point out, it was kind of a testament to the, to the water main uh, replacement program we have and how that's really cutting back on the severity and the amount of um, you know, emergencies that we have to respond to. Customer service or the water meter is uh, the part that interfaces with the uh, public uh, nonstop, the water customer. There are 7,000 water meters. Many of them are, are radio read, so we can, uh, either the vehicle in the photo there is a, uh, we, we drive the town and we can uh, read all the water meters remotely, or a majority of them. That's, we're not completely finished with that program. But uh, all in all, all the meter readings, some done monthly, some done quarterly uh, in a year. We process over 40,000 uh, water meter readings. The, the bills are actually administered in the clerk's office, uh, the bill sent out and the payments collected, but all the data collection is done in the water division and given to the uh, clerk's office. Other things that they do uh, with any bill and a high usage, or there's the, the response to the complaints, uh, not believing that their water usage is that high. So there's a lot of uh, interface with the customer too, and we do like in house inspections and kind of. Uh, debug some of the problems sometime, whether it's leaky toilets or you know a dripping faucet. There's there's always a um, uh, you know something that they can point to, and, it, and it's not always obvious that that could add up to you know a lot of, of water. The annual test where it says top 60, I threw that in there because uh, the biggest users we have, water meters are well, water meters are a function of the of the income from the water sales too. So meters that aren't reading correctly are loss of revenue for, for actual water being used. When a meter goes bad, a meter will never go bad in, uh, and read too high. It always reads too low as it gets older. So our, our biggest users, we have a, a way, they're all commercial users, of going in there and running tests on them, bypassing the meter uh, to determine that everything's uh, you know, in good working order and that we're, we're keeping track of all of our uh, you know, appropriate billings. Engineering is another, uh, I, I call it a division, it's a different function. At one time there was an actual separate budgeted division that was the engineering uh, division or engineering department before that. 
and there were all of the there were many functions in there and, and uh, you know on here in public works we have two licensed professional engineers but there's also a third in the economic development department when we were all in engineering um, it, it pretty much any uh, contractual a project or interface or public improvement that's done by that is uh, is interface with the engineer. The our own projects are, are handled in public works now, and when I say our own projects, when we rebuild our own streets or you know any new improvements, when there's private development going on and permitted uh, subdivision work or anything like that, those uh, you know on public works behalf is is uh, is watched by during the permit review by the other engineer that's in the economic development department I talked about managing and supervising the capital improvement projects there's stormwater management uh, there, it's not just stormwater management of our own projects there's a lot of um, uh, personal private assistance we're only responsible for the, the problems on public property but we do spend a lot of time uh, whether it's backyard drainage problems or, or or issues with drainage and foundations and groundwater. So there's a lot of uh, advisory work that uh, is done in engineering too uh, with, the, with the public itself. And anything that has to do with uh, traffic management other than enforcement, uh, you know, is done. Uh, we've got the ability to do um, basic traffic studies, speed studies, and things like that as well. These are some typical capital improvements that are, are done on a you know at a year-to-year -year basis. Not necessarily every single year, but we've got the general resurfacing project. Uh, you'll have a resolution later tonight, in fact, for appropriating monies for the, the next one. Uh, sidewalk projects. These would be sidewalks that were installed in new locations as opposed to the maintenance I was talking about before. You know, of the existing system, and any road reconstruction project. Reconstruction is rebuilding the road. You know, from the from the clay up. And some of our recent examples of projects that have done was the 59th Street, uh, William Street, Blackhawk Drive was the one that just finished up earlier this spring uh, as far as reconstruction. And of course, the Village White stormwater study uh, was completed this year, too. I'm getting into facilities maintenance now. There's two divisions left. They are uh, more of a, a support division internal to village operations. They, I'm not going to say they don't interface with the public, but uh, unlike street and water that are, are, are there most of the time, uh, facilities maintenance is uh, an, an internal services. It takes care of the buildings that we own. The uh, Village Hall, Westmont Center, the depot and the grounds, uh, and the two public works buildings themselves, as well as uh, recently we've taken on some responsibilities for uh, some of the preventative maintenance and the, the things we can do in-house at police uh, on the north side and fire headquarters on the south. Uh, there's still uh, certainly maintenance contracts, HVAC, and things like that as well, but uh, more and more of those we're uh, taking on as we can. They do the daily maintenance, uh, the, the, uh, the, the obvious stuff that I mentioned. Uh, they do have a lot of responsibility for the grounds uh, in and around, mostly in the downtown. The Village Hall, the depot, there's a person pretty much dedicated to the depot in the territory. They cut grass in the, in the summer and, and water flowers and full weeds and all the trash that goes with that and in the winter it turns off the turns into they, they have a lot of responsibility they've had more responsibilities moved to them as far as uh, winter maintenance they're going to be doing all the snow removal like in the public parking lots and the commuter lots as well as in and around uh, the ground so we're constantly reorganizing all of everything I've described so far I, I don't want you to think that it's these hard division lines, you know, that we, you know, we don't step out of those. They, they all work together. They do uh, different things. Uh, you know, parking lots are listed in here twice. You know, street takes care of the, you know, the, the physical problems and, and the facilities division, you know, does the, the daily uh, maintenance. And there, there's cross training and, and a lot of interdivisional help and it could be on a day to day basis. It's pretty dynamic. Uh, if someone needs help, they're, you know, pulling from different crews as well. And that's true with, um, facilities and more and more. Uh, lastly, I put on there the, you know, the custodial services for the two public buildings open to the public every day with the, the Village Hall and the Westmont Center. Uh, the last division is, is fleet maintenance. And the, the fleet is truly uh, an internal um, division in public works. They're, they're responsible for maintaining just, you know, every, well, everything we own that has a motor in it. The, um, they're, and it's not just public works, it's the entire village fleet. So whether it's the police, uh, you know, patrol cars, fire trucks, um, 
there are certain things with the fire department that we can't do because you need certain certifications to do it, but we have recently taken on more and more responsibility uh, with preventative maintenance in the fire department and the, uh, the vehicles in the public works themselves, the snow plows and, and all the maintenance of this, there's heavy equipment, there's the end loaders, the backhoes, and there's the small equipment too, which would be anything from a, you know, the, the trailer pulled brush uh, chipper or the uh, pumps and generators and other things that we uh, maintain. They've also, for example, just started looking at like the backup generators at the, you know, the different facilities too, and that wasn't uh, something that we were doing all along. The, um, we've only been taking on the, the maintenance of the uh, equipment for a couple years now. Kind of at all at the same time, there was a, a lot of good reorganization going on, and with your assistance, I mean, the one photo in there is, uh, the, the example of the, uh, the lifts, the mobile lifts that will, we never had the ability to pick these vehicles up before and it was part of the reason that we couldn't do maintenance on them. So with that uh, acquisition that you've allowed us, it's really allowed an awful lot of ability to take care of uh, more in-house. So these three guys uh, take care of a lot of uh, equipment. Uh, it was for, they're working with a crew of three. Uh, all these divisions I should mention are, are shorthanded from their, from their normal strength. And in fleet, I wanted to point out that besides taking on the, the maintenance in the fire department and getting rid of the outsourcing core costs, uh, at the same time we, we did the vehicle replacement plan. So I tried to you know represent all of these features uh, in this graph. Uh, the, the lines represent the the cost expended over time. You know the different budget amounts for vehicle maintenance, uh, the equipment maintenance, uh, outside services, which is that middle purple line. And it, it, this doesn't do justice because of the, you know, the way it's, it's stretched out to get that upper number, you can't get a good appreciation for how much the vehicle maintenance and equipment uh, costs have dropped off as far as the maintenance. But building in the personnel costs and, and going down in personnel too, the, that green dash line is a total representation of what it's been costing to maintain the fleet over time. And before we started the vehicle replacement program, uh, you know, trustee, uh, Fleming reminded me that you know the average age of the, the <clears throat> public works just the public works department vehicles was uh, 15 years and that was the average age so there was stuff that was a lot older than that before we got into the program so we've really been able to uh, besides all the hard work we've been able to knock down a lot of the, uh, the maintenance expense that came with the older fleet with the vehicle replacement program so that is a, a very quick you know overview of the of the five divisions there are you know, all of that together, I, for as long as I've been putting this together, I'm kind of even amazing myself of how much, how can all this be getting done with, you know, the 35 men and women that are, you know, putting this all together every day. And uh, in different combinations of all of us were, you know, uh, members either as a village or, or individually with different professional organizations, there's a lot of interaction with those organizations too. I, I wanted to mention when we were talking about uh, facilities, our, our facilities manager is also not just the public work safety coordinator, but he's also the uh, village safety coordinator for, um, for all departments. And that relationship, uh, in addition to his work and, and, and Mike Ramsey is also, uh, has a lot of work with the uh, or IRMA, our Intergovernmental Risk Management Agency, as far as uh, the safety programs I'm participating in the Public Works Steering Committee too, and there's a very big public works involvement in risk management, and uh, you know, then I, you all know that's shown in the, the ratings and everything, and we, we get very good scores. I think we're the, you know, the second from the top uh, from you know, all the communities that are part of that pool. So, um, You know, with that, that was everything. There was a lot in there. You've heard me say, you know, we a lot. I actually don't do any of it. You know, there, there are a lot of good, dedicated professionals in there. I watch them all work, and the four of the supervisors are here with me tonight. If there's any specific questions, I'd, I'd love to take them, you know, so I can deflect them over you know, to them. But if there's anything you wanted me to elaborate more on, I, I'd be glad to. Steve, I just want to tell you that of all of the departments, I think Public Works is the one that the general public takes most for granted. Um, you do a tremendous amount of work with a not so tremendous amount of people. And on your first uh, 
PowerPoint slide where you say serving the public good every day in quiet dedication. That includes, even though we'd like to run you over with our plows, we don't. Yeah. Um, so, but um, thank you very much. I know uh, I and um, a lot of people I know certainly appreciate all the work. All right, I thank you for those comments. And uh, uh, it's nice of you to refer to that first slide because that's, uh, it's public works in a, you know, other like there's other public services and obviously the public safety, you got police and fire and they're out there in their presence and they're seen and they're meant to be seen and here we are. And, and you know when public works is doing its best is when you don't even know they're around. You know, they're, you know, nothing's defective, everything's taken care of. You're, it doesn't matter if you live on 55th Street or a cul-de-sac, you expect your snow to be missing, you know, when you get up to leave for work in the morning and stuff. So that's, that's the goal to be unnoticed. I want to apologize because your supervisor of your fleet, yes. Burnett, is in here. Burnett. And I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't uh, call you. Go ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a, a question on the uh, water division portion on the radio reads. Um, I know we're not all there. Do we have any idea how close we are to getting the majority of homes? Are we still going back to the where they put the box on the house? Or are we actually still going all the way back in reading? Uh, we know. Can you come up here? We know exactly where we're at with the radio read. It, it's kind of turned into a, a budget function each year. Is how many more we can pick off, um, you know, to complete that. Well, one problem we're having is that you know the initial radio reads we put in, they only had an eight-year life with batteries. So we're fighting that battle too, going to replace some of the batteries. The new batteries that are out there now are 20 years. So once we can get some of those eight-year batteries that are dying with the 20-year batteries, then we could be more aggressive with the rest of them. But to, get, to answer your question, we have 6,886 meters out there, to be exact, and we have a little more than 500 left to go. Okay. And all the meters have been changed. Every meter in town has been changed. The oldest meter we have in town right now is 14 years old. So um, starting this coming up budget, at the 15 year mark is when we got to go back and start replacing meters again. So <laughs> I'm hoping that we can get pretty much done and then we're going to have to start all over again. But the radio reboxes will, will not have to be changed, just the meters themselves. So we're close. We, you know, we're, we're really close. I didn't know if there were still some homes you still had to, you know, make an appointment to go in and actually physically. No, read. Actually, the, the 500 that we have still to, to replace are all phone reads. There's, okay, those are the phone ones. Every meter, every meter in town is automated one way or another, either phone oh, read or radio fantastic. read. But we're trying to phase out that phone read because it was not a successful program as we thought. And that's the other question I was going to ask. So it was an eight-year battery, and now the new ones are 20 years. 20 years, yeah. So how long have you been putting the 20 years in? Uh, 20 years we've been putting in for like last five, six years. So we're okay with those for a while. And, and we're starting to install the radio read boxes on the outside of the house. So we don't have to get them back into people's homes. Once the, the new ones we can install outside. So once that happens, then we can just go and change those batteries without making appointments. But the oh. older style, the ones at the eight-year batteries, we still have to go in because they were meant to be inside. You still try and let them know you're going to the restaurant. Right, right. We still make appointments, but we, 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 you know, we just let them know we don't have to go inside. We can still, you know, we still go on their property, but we don't have to go in their house. Does it tell you when the battery is going on those eight years? Do you have it a does. When we drive around, it'll give us a little warning. It'll tell us, you know, that the battery is starting to get low. Okay, so you do have a warning ahead of time before it completely dies. Exactly. Okay, fantastic. I don't have a good picture of that computer, but the, the, there's a laptop and a vehicle and an antenna mounted in it, and they, they have to drive it because we don't have the ability to reach the entire town uh, with a, a system of three antennas, uh, you know, relayed throughout there. If we could get to that point, you can actually just sit in the office and pull all the meters at the same time. So that's a, that's a goal, but it's, it's not a, an urgent project. Just make one more comment too. One thing uh, we used to do is when we used to walk around, it used to take us 31 to 35 days to read the entire route. Now we can read the entire route in three hours. So it'll oh give you an idea. God. So it does really pay off to have the system. Great, great. Hey, just out of curiosity, before we started the water main replacement program, just so people understand the infrastructure that we're dealing with, what was the oldest water main we had in this town before we started that? Actually, uh, the oldest water main we had in town was in the oldest part of town, like where um, Mrs. Shemsky lives. Um, that was, was put in 1920s, 1921, 22. Now, the other part, the North Linden, the original water main was put in back in the 19, early 1900s, so that's when we first took over our system. Just replaced but, that. But that, that. Actually, that first phase was replaced, and then we just replaced the, the next phase, which was in the 30s, with North Linden we replaced. But that was the original water system. 
So, but uh, most of the old water main, except for that northwest, far northwest section, is still uh, that's that's still older water main. But everywhere else is pretty, pretty new. So, how about Des Moines? That's got two different readings on it—a new one and an old one, right? Yeah, Des Moines from Wilmette to uh, Richmond is new, but from Des Moines from Wilmette to Cass is old. Any idea? Is that the? It's on our 10-year plan. Yeah. Oh, it's been on that for a lot longer. <laughs> I know it's, it's on our 10-year. That and Richmond are, are the two main streets on that side of town. We did Oak. I mean, we, I'm sorry, we did Quincy, and we're going to plan on doing Richmond. And Richmond. Like I said, we got enough eight years into the 10-year plan. Yeah. We got enough sea clamps on there that it's been <laughs> holding its own. So, thank you. Anybody else have any? No, just thank you for all you do. I mean, it's just amazing with the size of staff, all of the different areas that you cover. It's, you. you know, from yeah. the leaves on the trees to the water going through the streets. It's just amazing, and, and thank you. I know when I get my tax bill and I see that only eight cents out of every dollar comes to Westmont, and then I hear things like this, I think we're getting a lot of bang for our buck. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, staff, too. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, too, for taking Great the presentation. To thank you. Hmm? I just wanted to say thank you as well. Uh, it was a very informative presentation and um, obviously the department does an outstanding job um, despite uh, Steve's uh, modest comments at the end I think he, he it should be acknowledged that over the last seven or eight years he's really brought together these different distinct divisions and have managed them during a time when we've had some fairly severely shrinking resources so to, to stand up there and say he doesn't do anything I don't think is a fair <laughs> characterization <laughs> Nothing that hurts. Well, that may be true, but uh, thank you very much. That's great. Very good. <clears throat> I have nothing else to think. Okay, thank you. New business. Uh, Alpha Motors, uh, 301 to 312 East Agden. Board to consider ordinances approving the following requests for Alpha Motors of Westmont LLC. Uh, a, a special use permit request to allow the sale of used automobiles. B, a revised site plan approval required as a condition of special use approval. C, a waiver request to permit substandard parking stall dimensions. D, a waiver uh, request to permit substandard drive aisle widths. E, a motion to allow the use of automobile racks for displaying vehicles. May I have a motion on A? So move, Scott. Second, Emory. Discussion. Um, I have a question about um, if Alpha Motors is coming in for a special use permit, when I drive by there, it looks like they're already in business before we've given them a permit. What's the reasoning? Uh, there was some confusion in their mind whether a previous special use, going back, I think, most recently to the 1980s to allow an auto dealership allowed them to operate this dealership without having to come back in for permission. They started their operations, staff said, I, you know, you, you need a new special use permit. They had consulted with me. And um, after getting some reassurances as to how they were operating, staff uh, allowed them to continue operations while they went through the process, knowing that if this were denied, they would have to cease operations. Okay, thank you. But how long has this taken? Uh, they opened up when? March, I think February, March. I, I know one of the delays um, was their attempts to revise the site plan on multiple uh, occasions to first comply with some of the staff concerns and then planning and zoning concerns. So it bounced around a planning and zoning for a little bit, and this might be the third or fourth site plan version uh, that we've seen from what they originally presented. That was some of the delay. I don't know how long it took from when they opened to when they actually applied. Didn't they have to get a business permit? Yes. And, and when did it have been immediately aware on our end that there was a used car and we had a special use? I have to defer to staff on this one. Um, I think this goes back, uh, Trustee, to uh, a discussion we had with the village attorney. In the past, we've always been under the impression that the law regarding uh, special use permits went with the land in perpetuity unless otherwise stipulated. Uh, Mr. Zemanak was able to uh, inform us of a recent Illinois Supreme Court case, I believe it was, John? 
that um, now casts some doubt on that and indicates that it is possible that if there is a considerable period of vacancy or a considerable time elapses between the last special use permit and the, and the new operation, that it may be possible for a municipality to exercise its authority and require a new special use permit. We felt in light of that new legal interpretation that we would err on the side of conservatism and require them to come back before the village board. Any idea how long of a time we're talking about then? Well, Illinois courts haven't flushed it out uh, enough. Some states have actually mandated this by state statute that a special use permit terminates after X number of years of abandonment. What I'm going to propose to the village as a uh, zoning ordinance text amendment is that we write that into our own ordinance um, so that all these special uses will, will terminate and we don't have someone coming back 10, 15, 20 years later saying, aha, I realize there's a special use from X number of years ago. So we can do that. We can uh, yes. write it in and give a time span, whether it's, can we do it immediately when that owner leaves the special use ends? Um, yes, you, you, there, you, you know, as a home rule community, uh, you can pretty much do anything as long as you're not taking away due process rights of, of an owner. And what we've been doing, at least till then, is when the board has had concerns tying a special use to either a specific owner or a sunset clause of some sort. And that's true in this particular case. Um, but, you know, we can work on language for a text amendment and get that in front of you. So soon. do we have a sunset or? Yes. Okay. So the sunset's in there. Yes. Okay. Don't we have an ordinance on the books that if a business closes for a period of 90 days, that at the end of 90 days, they want to reopen, even if it's the same business, mm -hmm. they have to come in? Yes, that's for legal non-conforming uses and legal non-conforming structures. If they are abandoned for a period of 90 days or more, they lose their legal non-conforming structure and can only be occupied by a conforming use or a conforming structure. This is different. This is a, a special use where there was some question, if it runs with the land, how long does it run with the land? We're getting that underway as soon as possible, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, we'll shoot for getting it on, not the October upcoming PNZ, but I, I think something like that, um, maybe November. We've kind of been assembling a list of a number of uh, changes to the zoning ordinance that are going to be recommended, and I guess it's, it's a question of how quickly do you want to push some of these through? Do you want comprehensive review of the zoning ordinance, uh, certain provisions? Um, or you want to take some of the more important ones first? I think the village planner was kind of waiting for an agenda that might be a little bit less in volume so that we wouldn't overwhelm either the Planning and Zoning Commission or the Village Board. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have any? And if not, we'll take roll call, please. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Clevenel? No. Trustee Emery? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Seneca? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. <clears throat> uh, on B, may I have a motion? Motion to approve Emery. Second Seneca? Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Klebina? No. Trustee Seneca? Yes. Number C, <coughs> I have a motion. Motion to approve, Emery. Second, Forsley. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Klebanow? No. Trustee Seneca? Yes. On D, may I have a motion? Motion to approve, Emery. Second, Forsley. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Clevenel? No. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Floresley? Yes. Trustee Seneca? Yes. And E, may I have a motion? Motion to approve Seneca. Second, Emery. Okay, any discussion? Yeah. Um, I read the email that sent through, but 
I mean, I, this, this parcel of property, and this goes back to P&Z days, is to me a hardship in a given situation. Now, if Toyota has got one rack up, or got two racks up, I would be inclined to say I would cut them back to the same quantity. If anything on the one corner where that property really cuts down into that dip, I mean, it's just a thought. I mean, I, I understand what we've done with a lot of the other stuff, and um, but I just think that this parcel has a unique situation with it. Do we have the number of racks in the that we're talking about? Is it two? I think there were four or five on that parcel. And did we ever find out <clears throat> as a dealer those racks were being used? In this property in question? Yeah. Because I know they were being used by that previous, by Barbara Motors or whatever it was, it was there. Those and I think they had them on, on the front of the building too, up on the grass part. Yeah. Closer to so, Again, that all predates time that the board started instituting that as a special condition. Can we, uh, can we uh, take away things that we allowed before? Like Toyota's racks? Can we take away th their right to do that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's nothing illegal about displaying a car on a rack, and it wasn't conditioned special use ordinance for Toyota back in the 1980s or early I'm sorry 1994 so I, I don't see where legally we could stop them from doing that well, what if we, we decide universally that we don't we don't want to see anymore it'd be like if we changed our sign ordinance that nothing's higher than 12 feet we'd make everybody comply <clears throat> uh, yeah it, that becomes an issue um, you know of, of whether they'd argue they have grandfathered legal non-conforming rights to do that because they have been doing that you can retroactively implement code changes, but that's usually when it's compelled by the public health, safety, and welfare, such as retrofitting fire sprinklers or other safety type requirements. To do it for elevated car racks, I don't know that we can legally justify it. Toyota's restricted to one, correct? They have no restrictions on them. I, I thought we said, oh, okay. I thought it said one. Uh, the, the one thing I, I did receive a phone call on was I believe several of these dealerships now have racks out there, even though it might be in their ordinances, and I sent an email to Fred and asked him to check on it and uh, tell him they have to remove them. I don't think we've been enforcing it, and uh, I think some of them are taking advantage of us, which, again, makes me a little bit uncomfortable about this. I'm uncomfortable about the way he came in, assuming that he got the ordinance and stuff and, and things, so I'm... I, I would have rather been up forward with this guy and, and stuff. So I'm, that's the reason I'm voting the way I am, but that, that's up to you. Um, I do know it seems like uh, we might be having several of our dealerships might be throwing in some racks, and I don't know if something slipped through. Sometimes you get a new general manager in who's not aware of the conditions, and he starts using them and until the village tells him to stop, then you know, okay. he probably will keep doing it. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the same situation when they were putting more cars up in front than they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. They always push the, the edge, and that's, and I mean, it, it's not just one particular one. It just seems like that's what they do. And again, maybe it is because they put a new general manager in who doesn't bother reading the ordinances and just does what he wants. Um, but we either have to start enforcing them to be fair to everybody, or we have to allow it. And, uh, I'm not going to pick on any one particular dealership, but they all push us to the limits. Any further? The thing is, if we do if we do allow it, are we going to limit the number? That was my or just flat. You can have as many as you want, no, or, or no? No, that, that's why it's, there would be a limit. That's why. Well, I'm sorry. That's why I said. That's why I said there would be a limit. But I mean, I, I look at this as a hardship situation. I mean, when you hear, or you even see in your packet from planning and zoning, you know, is this is an undue hardship, or is this whatever? I mean, I mean, and yeah. the hardship being the elevation, mm -hmm. because when I drove by there today, it wasn't as low yeah. as I thought it was. 
I, I don't see that as a hardship at all any longer. I mean, they chose that the property. They knew yeah. what they were getting, and they know that we've been restricting racks, so I don't have a problem with it. Have, have we, um, are we pushing them on their um, uh, landscaping, that they're going to have all this landscaping up front blocking these cars? I don't, I didn't hear of anything about all this landscaping that's going to block the cars or anything. Well, they didn't, technically they did not need site plan approval mm -hmm. or landscaping because they're taking an existing site. Um, you could have imposed certain landscaping, and they have done landscaping, I think, Fred, correct? Um, but they did not have to come in for brand new uh, landscaping and, right. and a new landscaping. But, plan. I mean, there's nothing that I remember, recall when I, uh, I, I just caught it at a glimpse again when I drove by. I keep forgetting to look at that spot, but I didn't remember seeing anything that was blocking, like hedges or anything that would block the view down. It seemed like it was a fairly open lot. Very open. So. What did the gentleman say? He was sold 100 cars a month? Yep. Without them. Or has he got them up? No, he doesn't, does he? It's not too bad. Trustee, I believe the, the gentleman does have the racks there now, and he has been using those because he bought them from the former dealership. So I. Do you remember how many he, he said he had? I believe there's like five. I, think so. I thought there was at least almost close to half a dozen. Yeah. And he's got them all in a row right directly in front of the building there. Where they hit them before, yes, up sir. on the grass. So, and I haven't seen it, and I, maybe I should ask so the ordinance is clear. They're displaying cars in the grass in front of, I know they have like a handicapped parking space up front and a yes. few other spaces yes. f fronting out onto Ogden. And in front of that is where they have cars displayed? That's correct. Because mm -hmm. one of the conditions in the ordinance, and. I didn't know it was an issue was uh, no display of vehicles on grass. Right. I guess that would have to be removed. Yes. That's an issue that should be decided upon. But that is where they are currently using the racks. On the grass? Yes. My. <laughs> Push to the limit. Mm. Uh, Jen, can we split the vote into uh, racks at all, and then if it passes racks, how many? In case it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, make a motion for um, that we vote. Well, we got the thing on the day. racks. So do you want to just do the racks now? And just then? the racks. Okay. So that that stands as E then, for just the racks, and if it passes, then we'll do a. F then? Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. So we have uh, Sue is a, uh, Sue made the motion and Ellen seconded, right? Right. Okay. Right. So may we have roll call on just approving whether we're going to approve Rex or not, please. Trustee Seneca. No. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Klebanoff. No. Trustee Emery. No. Tie vote. We don't have the mayor to break it. That fails. Okay. 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 So I guess we don't have to worry about how many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay that ends uh, that one. Number three, Coil Ridge Office Center, 640 Pasquinelli Drive. Board to consider an ordinance approving a solid masonry waiver request from Quail Ridge Office Center to permit the construction of a wooden gazebo. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Emory. Second, Scott. Any questions, any discussion? Did the mayor skip this meeting because he knew he may have to break a tie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So, okay. Any discussion on three? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Seneca? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Clevenau? Yes. Number four, Lacey and Associates, Van Buren Enterprise, 2 West Ogden Avenue, board to consider an ordinance approving a special use permit request by Lacey and Associates, Van Buren Enterprises to allow an automobile repair shop at 2 West Ogden Avenue. May we have a motion? 
Motion to approve, Henry. Second, Scott. Any discussion? Um, this is another reason why I would like to see on our agenda um, when a business closes subject <coughs> to a special use, the special use is extinguished. Um, because as Trustee Seneca said last Thursday, I don't think this is highest and best use of a corner property at the, at the biggest intersection in this village. And um, a lot of work was done before they came in for the approval. So that's my two cents. In their defense, they did, it was another situation of it being unclear whether the special use continued. They did operate this use at the property. It just was ancillary to the gas mm -hmm. station. Yeah. And, and once again, staff, after consulting with me, or maybe I issued a letter after consulting with staff, uh, allowing them to operate while they process their application in good faith. I understand that. I'm just saying that's why I would like special uses when a bit when abandoned in, you know short time like 90 days are extinguished but would it have to be the full use because they it was a gas station and repair and it was only part of it that doesn't matter if it's a special use it extinguishes after 90 days that's what I would like to see a special use stops when the person who got the special use permit leaves it's another thing. This is a new owner, wasn't it? Um, yes, this was a new owner, as I understand, okay. but the use did not stop. Right. It's a new, new owner of the property, but the same owner of the business. Oh, new owner of the property, but the business is the same? The, the Shell Company owned the property previously. The operator of the gas station and the repair shop had first right of refusal, I believe, uh, to purchase the property and executed that right. Mm -hmm. Okay. On a, on a special use permit, <clears throat> if the business closes, why would you need to put a time frame on how long it would still be in existence? If the business closes with the special use, mm -hmm. that's it. Right. I just threw the 90 days in there in case, you know, you didn't jump the gun and thought they were gone when they were on vacation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you, if you do that in two weeks. Yeah, no, but I agree with you. When when the business closes, it's over. Done or done. Well, well the reason I was questioning the, the two parts of it, because it was already a repair, and that's still going on, is what if you had a special use as a beauty shop, nail salon, yada, yada, and it was just the nail salon portion that closed, but the beauty shop was remaining. Does it mean this whole special use no. would end? No, they didn't stop doing business. The well, previous owner. But technically, I think yes. that's what we're doing here. This we, we have code provisions that talk about primary and ancillary uses in regards to special uses. And if the special use was granted for the primary use and that use stops, you just can't keep continuing the special the, but her, the ancillary. Her, her example yeah. is primary use. Yeah. May I also suggest we may be getting a little far afield. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 it's all special. great questions and something we need to work on. but. Uh, how relevant to what's here today? I, you know, I, I don't know. We'll have to really okay. craft some language that's that's fair and at the same time strict. Definitely. Any other discussion on this? All right, then may we have roll call, please? <clears throat> Trustee Emery. Uh, yes. Subject to we had gone over a few um, um, aesthetic changes and such. Those are special conditions in the ordinance that I'll make sure they uh, get off to the corner. Okay. <coughs> Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Clevenel? Yes. Trustee Seneca? Yes. <coughs> Next is Funeral Home, 39 North Cass Avenue, Board to consider an ordinance approving a development permit request for a funeral home at 39 North Cass Avenue. May I have a motion? Motion approved, Scott. Second, Seneca. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have a roll call, please? Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Seneca? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Clevenow. Yes. Number six.
Class II Liquor License Reduction, 800 East Ogden Avenue, Board to consider an ordinance reducing the number of Class II Liquor Licenses by one due to the closure of Guava, a restaurant formerly located at 800 East Ogden Avenue. May I have a motion? So moved, Forsley. Second, Emory, is that supposed to be formerly located versus formally? Formally. <laughs> formally. Versus informal location. Please. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Any discussion other than that? Okay, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Emory. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Yes. Trustee Sunny. Yes. Number seven. Resolution for maintenance of streets and highways by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code. The board to consider adopting the IDOT resolution for the resurfacing a portion of Bentley Avenue as part of the village of Willowbrook's upcoming resurfacing project. Motion to approve. Emery. Second. Fleming. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Emery. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Number eight, resolution for improvement by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code. Uh, board to consider adopting the IDOT resolution for the village's 2011 MFT ERP resurfacing project, MFT number one zero 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 nine nine dash zero zero RS. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Emory. <coughs> Second, Scott. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Emory. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Lebanel. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Number nine, Illinois Department of Transportation, local agency agreement for state participation. Board to consider adopting the IDOT agreement for the village's 2011 MFT ERP. Wait, the reading. Resurfacing project. <laughs> May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Emory. Second, Scott. Oh, redundancy. Any more discussion? Gee. Hearing none, can we have roll call, please? Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Emery. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Yes. Trustee Plymouth. Yes. Interoperable Emergency Radio Project. Board to consider a motion to postpone an intergovernmental agreement, IGA, with DuPage County to provide a count countywide interoperable emergency dispatch radio system until the next committee of the whole meeting. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Emory. <coughs> Second, Scott. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Emory. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. <coughs> Number 11, Lions Candy Day. Board to consider a motion allowing the Westmont Lions Club to conduct their annual Candy Day for Humanitarian Services Program fundraising drive at various intersections in the village on Friday and Saturday, October 8th and 9th, 2010. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, Emory. Second, Forsley. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Emery. Yes. Trustee Clepinow. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Number 12, amended map for development moratorium. Board to consider an ordinance approving an amended map of the area subject to the development moratorium approved on September 20th, 2010. Motion, please. Motion to approve, Emery. Second, Scott. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Trustee Emery. Yes. Trustee Sporsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Yes. Number 13, proclamation. Board to consider a motion approving a proclamation declaring October 2010 as Community Planning Month. Motion please. 
So move, Scott. Second, Emory. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Yes. Trustee Emory. Yes. Number 14, proclamation. Board to consider a motion approving a proclamation declaring October 17, 2010 as South DuPage Crop Walk Days. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve, Emory. Second, Forsley. Any discussion? Well, no, no, hearing none, may we have a roll call, please? Trustee Emory. Yes. Trustee Forsley. Yes. Trustee Scott. Yes. Trustee Clevenel. Yes. Trustee Fleming. Yes. Trustee Seneca. Yes. <laughs> Finance Ordinance Number 11. On this fourth day of October 2010, we have a finance ordinance in the amount of $635,943.59. Motion to approve Seneca. Second, Emory. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Seneca? Yes. Trustee Clevenel? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Emery? Yes. Uh, purchase orders. New approve is a black for $147,760.04. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we have roll call, please? Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Seneca? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Clevenel? Yes. Uh, we have no call for any executive session, so We're nobody done. else has anything. We're done. Hearing none, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Emery. Second, Scott. May we have roll call, please? Trustee Emery? Yes. Trustee Clevenel? Yes. Trustee Fleming? Yes. Trustee Scott? Yes. Trustee Forsley? Yes. Trustee Sinek? Yes. Okay, thank you. This meeting is adjourned.